Yogachara IAST, Yogacara, literally, yoga practice. One whose practice is yoga is an influential school of Buddhist philosophy and psychology emphasizing phenomenology and ontology through the interior lens of meditative and yogic practices. It was associated with Indian Mahayana Buddhism in about the 4th century, but also included non Mahayana practitioners of the Dharstantika school. Yogacara discourse explains how our human experience is constructed by the mind. Nomenclature, orthography and etymology Sanskrit, Yogacara, Vijñānavada, Vijñapti Matra, Vijñapti Matrata, or Chittamatra Chinese, Wai Shi Zong Pinyin, Wei Shi Zong, Consciousness Only School, Wei Shi Yu Kixing Pai, Wai Shi Yu Jia Sheng, Consciousness Only Yogacara School, Fa Xiang Zong, Fa Xiang Zong, Dharmalaksana School, Xiang Zong, Xian Zong, Xian School, Japanese, Yuishiki, Wai Shi, Consciousness Only. Yugagyo, Yu Josh, Yogacara School. Korean, Yu Sek Jong, Yu Sek Jong, Consciousness Only School. Yugahang Pa, Yugahang, Yogacara School. Yu Sek Yugahang Pa, Yu Sek Yugahang, Consciousness Only Yogacara School. Vietnamese, Dui Thuc Tong, Consciousness Only School. Du Jia Han Tong, Yogacara School. Tibetan, Wiley, Rnal, Byor Spied Pa, Thl, Nenjor Chopa, Yogacara. Tibetan, Wiley, Sems Sam, Thl, Semtsam, Chittamatra. Mongolian, Exer English, Yoga Practice School, Consciousness Only School, Subjective Realism, Mind Only School. History The Yogacara, along with the Madhyamaka, is one of the two principal philosophical schools of Indian Mahayana Buddhism. Origination The earliest text of this tradition is the Samdhanirmocana Sutra which might be as early as the 1st or 2nd century CE. It includes new theories such as the basis consciousness and the doctrine of cognition only and the three natures. However, these theories were not completely new, as they have predecessors in older theories held by previous Buddhist schools, such as the Satrantika theory of seeds and the Stavira Nikaya's Abhidharma theory of an unconscious bhavanga. Richard King has also noted the similarity of the Satantrika representationalism and the Yogacara. The Satrantika accept that it is only the form akara or representation of an object which is perceived. Where the schools differ is in the Yogacara refusal to accept the validity of discussing external objects as causes nimitta given that an external object is never directly perceived. The Samdhanirmocana Sutra, as the doctrinal trailblazer of the Yogacara, inaugurated the paradigm of the three turnings of the wheel of Dharma, with its own tenets in the third turning. The Yogacara texts are generally considered part of the third turning along with the relevant sutra. Some traditions categorize this teaching as within the fourth turning of the wheel of Dharma. Moreover, Yogacara discourse surveys and synthesizes all three turnings and considers itself as the final definitive explanation of Buddhism. The orientation of the Yogacara school is largely consistent with the thinking of the Pali Nikayas. It frequently treats later developments in a way that realigns them with earlier versions of Buddhist doctrines. One of the agendas of the Yogacara school was to reorient the complexity of later refinements in Buddhist philosophy to accord with early Buddhist doctrine. Asanga and Vasubandhu Yogacara, which had its genesis in the Samdhanirmocana Sutra, was largely formulated by the Brahmin-born half-brothers Asanga and Vasubandhu. Asanga spent many years in intense meditation, during which time tradition says that he often visited the Tasita heaven to receive teachings from Maitreya. Heavens such as Tasita are said to be accessible through meditation and accounts of this are given in the writings of the Indian Buddhist monk Paramartha, who lived during the 6th century. Xuanzang tells a similar account of these events. 
In the Great Mango Grove five or six li to the southwest of the city Ayodhya, there is an old monastery where Asanga Bodhisattva received instructions and guided the common people. At night he went up to the place of Maitreya Bodhisattva in Tasita Heaven to learn the Yogacarabhumi Sastra, the Mahayana Sutra Alamkara Sastra, the Madhyanta Vibhaga Sastra, etc. In the daytime, he lectured on the marvelous principles to a great audience. Asanga went on to write many of the key Yogacara treatises such as the Yogacarabhumi Sastra, the Mahayana Samgraha and the Abhidharma Samukhaya as well as other works, although there are discrepancies between the Chinese and Tibetan traditions concerning which works are attributed to him and which to Maitreya, the Yogacara school held a prominent position in Indian Buddhism for centuries after the time of Asanga and Vasubandhu. Teachings and derivations of this school have influenced and become well established in East Asian Buddhism and Tibetan Buddhism. Yogacara and Madhyamaka According to Tibetan sources, this school was in protracted dialectic with the Madhyamaka. However, there is disagreement among contemporary Western and traditional Buddhist scholars about the degree to which they were opposed, if at all. To summarize the main difference, while the Madhyamaka held that asserting the existence or non-existence of any ultimately real thing was inappropriate, some later exponents of Yogacara asserted that the mind or in the more sophisticated variations, primordial wisdom and only the mind is ultimately real. This is, however, a later interpretation of Yogacara, and Vasubandhu and Asanga in particular did not assert that mind was truly inherently existent. The position that Yogacara and Madhyamaka were in dialectic was expounded by Xuanzang in the 7th century. After a suite of debates with exponents of the Madhyamaka school in India, Xuanzang composed in Sanskrit the no longer extant 3000 verse treatise The Non Difference of Madhyamaka and Yogacara. Yogacara and Madhyamaka philosophers demonstrated two opposing tendencies throughout the history of Buddhist philosophy in India one which worked to separate and distance the two systems, and one tendency which worked towards harmonizing them. The harmonizing tendency can be seen in the work of philosophers like Santaraksita and also the work of the Yogacara thinker Ratnakariksanti c. 1000. These thinkers also saw the Yogacara Alakakaravada, false aspectarian. Those Yogacaras who believe that mental appearances are false or don't ultimately exist view as the highest. Santaraksita 8th century, whose view was later called Yogacara Svatantrika Madhyamaka by the Tibetan tradition, saw the Madhyamika position as ultimately true and at the same time saw the Yogacara view as a useful way to relate to conventionalities and progress students more skillfully toward the ultimate. This synthesized view between the two positions, and also incorporated the views of valid cognition pramana from Dignaga and Dharmakirti. Later Tibetan Buddhist thinkers like Shakya Chokden would also work to show the compatibility of the Alakakaravada sub-school with Madhyamaka, arguing that it is in fact a form of Madhyamaka. Likewise, the seventh Karmapa Chodrak Gyamso has a similar view which holds that the profound important points and intents of the two systems are one. Ju Mipham is also another Tibetan philosopher whose project is aimed as showing the harmony between Yogacara and Madhyamaka, arguing that there is only a very subtle difference between them, being a subtle clinging by Yogacaras to the existence of an inexpressible, naturally luminous cognition. Rig Pa Rang Bz Hin Gyis Odd Gsal Ba. Yogacara in East Asia Translations of Indian Yogacara texts were first introduced to China in the early 5th century CE. Among these was Gunabhadra's translation of the Lankavatara Sutra in four fascicles, which would also become important in the early history of Chan Buddhism. During the 6th century, the Indian monk and translator Paramartha widely propagated Yogacara teachings in China. His translations include the Samdhanirmocana Sutra, the Madhyantavabhaga Karika, the Trimsika Vijñaptamatrata, and the Mahayana Samgraha. Paramartha also taught widely on the principles of consciousness only, and developed a large following in southern China. Many monks and laypeople traveled long distances to hear his teachings, especially those on the Mahayana Samgraha. Although Yogacara teachings had been propagated widely in China before the 7th century, most looked to Xuanzang as the most important founder of East Asian Yogacara. 
At the age of 33, Xuanzang made a dangerous journey to India in order to study Buddhism there and to procure Buddhist texts for translation into Chinese. Dan Lusthaus writes that Xuanzang had come to the conclusion that issues of dispute in Chinese Buddhism could be resolved with the availability of important texts, and especially the Yogacarabhumi Sastra. Xuanzang spent over ten years in India traveling and studying under various Buddhist masters. Lusthaus writes that during this time, Xuanzang discovered that the manner in which Buddhists understood and interpreted texts was much richer and more varied than the Chinese materials had previously indicated, and drew meaning from a broad cultural context. Xuanzang's teachers included Silabhadra, the abbot of Nalanda, who was then 106 years old. Xuanzang was tutored in the Yogacara teachings by Silabhadra for several years at Nalanda. Upon his return from India, Xuanzang brought with him 657 Buddhist texts, including important Yogacara works such as the Yogacarabhumi Sastra. Upon his return to China, he was given government support and many assistants for the purpose of translating these texts into Chinese. As an important contribution to East Asian Yogacara, Xuanzang composed the treatise Cheng Wai Shi Lun, or Discourse on the Establishment of Consciousness Only. This work is framed around Vasubandhu's Trimsika Vijñaptamatrata, or 30 verses on consciousness only. Xuanzang upheld Dharmapala's commentary on this work as being the correct one, and provided his own explanations of these as well as other views in the Cheng Wai Shi Lun. This work was composed at the behest of Xuanzang's disciple Kuiji, and became a central representation of East Asian Yogacara. Xuanzang also promoted devotional meditative practices toward Maitreya Bodhisattva. Xuanzang's disciple Kuiji wrote a number of important commentaries on the Yogacara texts and further developed the influence of this doctrine in China, and was recognized by later adherents as the first true patriarch of the school. <laughs> <laughs> Yogacara in Tibet Yogacara was first transmitted to Tibet by Santaraksita and then later again by Atisa. Yogacara terminology, though not necessarily its view, is also employed by the Nyingmapa in attempting to describe the nondenumerable ultimate phenomenon, Tibetan. Yogacara is, therefore, an integral part of the history of Tibetan Buddhism, although Je Tsongkhapa whose reforms to Atisa's Kadam tradition are generally considered the beginnings of the Gelug school argued in favor of Yogacara views specifically regarding the existence and functioning of eight consciousnesses early in his career, the prevailing Gelug view eventually came to hold Yogacara views as a matter of interpretable meaning, therefore distinct from Madhyamaka logic which was held to be of definitive meaning in terms of Buddhist Two Truths doctrine. For their part, Jonang teachers, including Taranatha, held their own Shentong other voidness. Tibetan, Wiley, Ji Zan Stong views expressed in terms of Great Madhyamaka to be ultimately definitive in meaning, in contrast to the circumstantially definitive Rangtong self-voidness, or Prasangika, Tibetan, Wiley, Rang Stong philosophy of what they termed General Madhyamaka, comprising both Svatantrika and Prasangika Madhyamaka. Current discussions between Tibetan scholars regarding the differences between Shentong and Rangtong views may therefore appear similar to historical debates between Yogacara and Madhyamaka, but the specific distinctions have, in fact, evolved much further. Although later Tibetan views may be said to have evolved from the earlier Indian positions, the distinctions between the views have become increasingly subtle, especially as Yogacara has evolved to incorporate the Madhyamaka view of the ultimate. Jamgon Ju Mifam Gyatso, the 19th century Rime movement commentator, wrote in his commentary on Santaraksita's synthesis that the ultimate view in both schools is the same, and that each path leads to the same ultimate state of abiding. Principal exponents of Yogacara Principal exponents of Yogacara categorized and alphabetized according to location. China, Paramartha, Gen D 499-569, Xuanzang, Zanzang 602-664 and Kuiji, Kuiji 632-682 India, the half-brothers Asanga Wu Jai and Vasubandhu, Shi Chin Sturamati, and Wei Dharmapala, Hu Fa Silabhadra Jia Xian Japan, Chitsu, Ji Tong and Chidatsu, Ji Da of the Kushashu school, Dosho, Dao Zhao Jokei, Zhen Qing Zenju, Shan Zhu Tokuitsu. 
Daeyi Korea, Daehyeon, Da Xi'an Sinhang, Shen Xing 704-779, Wanchuk, Yuan Si 631-696 and Wunhyo, Yuan Shao Wunhyo 617-686. Topic: Textual corpus. Topic: <laughs> Sutras. The Samdhinirmocana Sutra, Sutra of the Explanation of the Profound Secrets, second century CE, was the seminal Yogacara Sutra and continued to be a primary referent for the tradition. The Lankavatara Sutra also assumed considerable importance and portions of this text were considered by Etienne Lamotte as being contemporaneous with the Samdhanirmocana. Other texts include the Sramaladevi Simanata Sutra and the Ganavyuha Sutra secret adornment, both which refer to the doctrine of the Alaya Vijnana. Also containing Yogacara elements were the Pratyatpana Samadhi Sutra 1st century CE and Dasapumika Sutra pre -3rd century CE. These two sutras contain statements about the mental character of everything. Topic: <inaudible> Five Treatises of Maitreya. Among the most important texts to the Yogacara tradition is the Five Treatises of Maitreya. These texts are said to have been related to a sangha by the Bodhisattva Maitreya from Tusita Heaven. Some scholars like Eric Frauwallner and Giuseppe Tucci held that Maitreya may have been a historical person and Asanga's teacher. Others like Eric Obermüller are of the opinion that Asanga wrote these five treatises himself. Fyodor Sherbatskoy likewise doubted the historicity of Maitreya. Whatever the case, the texts are as follows. Ornament for Clear Realization Abhisamayalankara, Tib, Mngon par r togs pi argian Ornament for the Mahayana Sutras Mahayana Sutralankara, Tib, Theg Pa Chen Poi Mdo Sde Arjian. Exposition of the Jeweled Lineage Ritnagatravabhaga, Tib, Theg Pa Chen Po Rgyud Bla Mai B Stan also known as the Uttaratantrasastra Distinguishing Phenomena and Pure Being Dharmadharmatavabhaga, Tib, Chos Dang Chos Nyidrnam Par Bide Pa Distinguishing the middle and the extremes, Madhyantavabhaga, Tib, Debus Dang Mtha, Rnam Par, Bide Pa, a commentary on the ornament for clear realization called Clarifying the Meaning, by Haribhadra is also often used, as is one by Vimuktisena. Tibetan. Most of these texts were also incorporated into the Chinese tradition, which was established several centuries earlier than the Tibetan. However, the ornament for clear realization is not mentioned by Chinese translators up to the 7th century, including Xuanzang, who was an expert in this field. This suggests it may possibly have emerged from a later period than is generally ascribed to it. Asanga Authorship of critical Yogacara texts is also ascribed to Asanga personally in contrast to the five treatises of Maitreya. Among them are the Mahayana Samgraha and the Abhidharma Samukhaya. Sometimes also ascribed to him as the Yogacarabhumi Sastra, a massive encyclopedic work considered the definitive statement of Yogacara, but most scholars believe it was compiled a century later, in the 5th century, while its components reflect various stages in the development of Yogacara thought. Asanga also composed a commentary to the Samdhanirmocana Sutra. <inaudible> Vasubandhu Vasubandhu is considered to be the systematizer of Yogacara thought. Vasubandhu wrote three foundational texts of the Yogacara Trisvabhava Nirdesa, Treatise on the Three Natures, Tib. Rang Bz Hin Gsum Nges Par B Stan. Vimsatika Karika, treatise in 20 stanzas. Trimsikika Karika, treatise in 30 stanzas. He also wrote an important commentary on the Madhyantavabhanga. According to Buddhist scholar J. Garfield, while the Trisvabhava Nirdesa is arguably the most philosophically detailed and comprehensive of the three short works on this topic composed by Vasubandhu, as well as the clearest, it is almost never read or taught in contemporary traditional cultures or centers of learning. The reason may be simply that this is the only one of Vasubandhu's root texts for which no autocommentary exists. 
For this reason, none of Vasubandhu's students composed commentaries on the text and hence there is no recognized lineage of transmission for the text. So nobody within the Tibetan tradition, the only extant Mahayana scholarly tradition could consider him or herself authorized to teach the text. It is therefore simply not studied, a great pity. It is a beautiful and deep philosophical essay and an unparalleled introduction to the Chittimatra system. Later texts Dignaga c. 480 c. 540 CE wrote an important Yogacara work, the Alambanapariksa and its VRTTI. Other important commentaries on various Yogacara texts were written by Stramati 6th century and Dharmapala of Nalanda 7th century, and an influential Yogacara Madhyamaka synthesis was formulated by Santaraksita 8th century. Tenets Yogacara is meant to be an explanation of experience, rather than a system of ontology. It uses various concepts in providing this explanation, representation only, the eight consciousnesses, the three natures, emptiness. They form a complex system, and each can be taken as a point of departure for understanding Yogacara. I and the vast and complex system that is known as Yogacara, all of these different approaches and categories are ultimately tied into each other, and thus, starting with any one of them, one can eventually enter into all of the rest. Yogacara is usually treated as a philosophical system, but it is a school of practice as well. Yogacara attaches importance to the religious practice of yoga as a means for attaining final emancipation from the bondage of the phenomenal world. The stages of yoga are systematically set forth in the treatises associated with this tradition. Yogacarans developed an Abhidharma literature set within a Mahayana framework. John Keenan, who has translated the Samdhanirmocana Sutra into English, writes, The Yogacara masters inherited the mystical approach of the Prajnaparamita texts. However, they did not reject the validity of theoretical Abhidharma. Rather they attempted to construct a critical understanding of the consciousness that underlies all meaning, both mystical and theoretical. Their focus was on doctrine, but as it flowed from the practice of meditative centering yoga, rather than as it was understood in acts of conceptual apprehension. <laughs> Vijñapti Matra One of the main features of Yogacara philosophy is the concept of Vijñapti Matra. It is often used interchangeably with the term Sita Matra, but they have different meanings. The standard translation of both terms is, "...consciousness only," or "...mind only." Several modern researchers object to this translation, and the accompanying label of "...absolute idealism," or "...idealistic monism." A better translation for Vijñapti Matra is representation only, while an alternative translation for Sita mind, thought, matra only, exclusively, has not been proposed. According to Dan Lusthaus, this theory is similar in some ways to Western phenomenological theories and epistemological idealism, but it is not a metaphysical idealism because Yogacara rejects the construction of metaphysical theories. Regarding Vijñapti Matra, Lusthaus translates it as nothing but conscious construction and states it is, a deceptive trick is built into the way consciousness operates at every moment. Consciousness projects and constructs a cognitive object in such a way that it disowns its own creation, pretending the object is, out there, in order to render that object capable of being appropriated. Even while what we cognize is occurring within our act of cognition, we cognize it as if it were external to our consciousness. Realization of Vijñapti Matra exposes this trick intrinsic to consciousness's workings, thereby eliminating it. When that deception is removed one's mode of cognition is no longer termed Vijñana consciousness, it has become direct cognition jnana see above. Consciousness engages in this deceptive game of projection, dissociation, and appropriation because there is no self. According to Buddhism, the deepest, most pernicious erroneous view held by sentient beings is the view that a permanent, eternal, immutable, independent self exists. There is no such self, and deep down we know that. This makes us anxious, since it entails that no self or identity endures forever. In order to assuage that anxiety, we attempt to construct a self, to fill the anxious void, to do something enduring. 
The projection of cognitive objects for appropriation is consciousness's main tool for this construction. If I own things, ideas, theories, identities, material objects, then I am. If there are eternal objects that I can possess, then I too must be eternal. To undermine this desperate and erroneous appropriative grasping, Yogacara texts say, negate the object, and the self is also negated, e.g., Madhyanta Vibhaga, 1 4, 8. According to Thomas Kachamudam, Yogacara is a realistic pluralism. It does not deny the existence of individual beings, what it denies is that the absolute mode of reality is consciousness, mind, ideas. That the individual beings are transformations or evolutes of an absolute consciousness, mind, idea. That the individual beings are but illusory appearances of a monistic reality. Vijñapti matra then means, mere representation of consciousness. T. He phrase vada means a theory which says that the world as it appears to the unenlightened ones is mere representation of consciousness. Therefore, any attempt to interpret Vijñaptamatrata Vada as idealism would be a gross misunderstanding of it. The term Vijñapti Matra replaced the more metaphysical term Sita Matra used in the Lankavatara Sutra. The Lankavatara Sutra appears to be one of the earliest attempts to provide a philosophical justification for the absolutism that emerged in Mahayana in relation to the concept of Buddha. It uses the term sata matra, which means properly, thought only. By using this term it develops an ontology, in contrast to the epistemology of the term vijñapti matra. The Lankavatara Sutra equates sata and the absolute. According to Kachamudam, this is not the way Yogacara uses the term vijñapti. T he absolute state is defined simply as emptiness, namely the emptiness of subject-object distinction. Once thus defined as emptiness sunyata, it receives a number of synonyms, none of which betray idealism. The term sata matra was used in Tibet and East Asia interchangeably with yogacara, although modern scholars believe it is inaccurate to conflate the two terms. Even the uniformity of an assumed yogacara school has been put into question. Consciousness. Yogacara gives a detailed explanation of the workings of the mind and the way it constructs the reality we experience. Vasubandhu used the concept of the six consciousnesses, on which he elaborated in the Trimsikika Karika treatise in 30 stanzas. .According to the traditional interpretation, Vasubandhu states that there are eight consciousnesses, the five sense consciousnesses, mind perception, manas self-consciousness, and the storehouse consciousness. According to Kalupahana, this classification of eight consciousnesses is based on a misunderstanding of Vasubandhu's Trimsikika Karika by later adherents. <laughs> Karma, seeds and storehouse consciousness According to the traditional explanation, the theory of the consciousnesses attempted to explain all the phenomena of cyclic existence, including how rebirth occurs and precisely how karma functions on an individual basis. It addressed questions that had long vexed Buddhist philosophers, such as If one carries out a good or evil act, why and how is it that the effects of that act do not appear immediately? Insofar as they do not appear immediately, where is this karma waiting for its opportunity to play out? The answer given by later Yogacarans was the store consciousness Sanskrit, alayavijñana, also known as the basal, or eighth consciousness. It simultaneously acts as a storage place for karmic latencies and as a fertile matrix of predispositions that bring karma to a state of fruition. The likeness of this process to the cultivation of plants led to the creation of the metaphor of seeds Sanskrit, bija, to explain the way karma is stored in the eighth consciousness. In the Yogacara formulation, all experience without exception is said to result from the ripening of karma. The seemingly external world is merely a byproduct adhipati phala of karma. The term vasana perfuming is also used, and Yogacarans debated whether Vasana and Bija were essentially the same, the seeds were the effect of the perfuming, or whether the perfuming simply affected the seeds. The type, quantity, quality and strength of the seeds determine where and how a sentient being will be reborn, one's race, gender, social status, proclivities, bodily appearance and so forth. 
The conditioning of the mind resulting from karma is called samskara. The treatise on action, Prakarana, also by Vasubandhu, treats the subject of karma in detail from the Yogacara perspective. Topic: <laughs> Transformations of consciousness. The traditional interpretation may be discarded on the ground of a reinterpretation of Vasubandhu's works. According to scholar Roger R. Jackson, a "...fundamental unconstructed awareness is "...described frequently in Yogacara literature." According to Kalupahana, instead of positing additional consciousnesses, the Trimsikika Karika describes the transformations of this consciousness. Taking vipaka, manjana and vinapti as three different kinds of functions, rather than characteristics, and understanding vijnana itself as a function Vasubandhu seems to be avoiding any form of substantialist thinking in relation to consciousness. These transformations are threefold. Whatever, indeed, is the variety of ideas of self and elements that prevails, it occurs in the transformation of consciousness. Such transformation is threefold, namely, the first transformation results in the alaya, the resultant, what is called mentation, as well as the concept of the object. Herein, the consciousness called alaya, with all its seeds, is the resultant. The alaya vijnana therefore is not an eight consciousness, but the resultant of the transformation of consciousness. Instead of being a completely distinct category, alaya vijnana merely represents the normal flow of the stream of consciousness uninterrupted by the appearance of reflective self-awareness. It is no more than the unbroken stream of consciousness called the life process by the Buddha. It is the cognitive process, containing both emotive and cognitive aspects of human experience, but without the enlarged egoistic emotions and dogmatic graspings characteristic of the next two transformations. The second transformation is manjana, self-consciousness or self-view, self-confusion, self-esteem and self-love. According to the Lankavatara and later interpreters it is the seventh consciousness. It is thinking about the various perceptions occurring in the stream of consciousness. The alaya is defiled by this self-interest. I.T. can be purified by adopting a non-substantialist perspective and thereby allowing the alaya part i.e. attachment to dissipate, leaving consciousness or the function of being intact. The third transformation is visaya vinapti, the concept of the object. In this transformation the concept of objects is created. By creating these concepts human beings become susceptible to grasping after the object. Vasubandhu is critical of the third transformation, not because it relates to the conception of an object, but because it generates grasping after a real object, Sadartha, even when it is no more than a conception that combines experience and reflection. A similar perspective is given by Walpola Rahula. According to Walpola Rahula, all the elements of the Yogacara storehouse consciousness are already found in the Pali Canon. He writes that the three layers of the mind sita, manas, and vijnana as presented by Asanga are also mentioned in the Pali Canon. Thus we can see that vijnana represents the simple reaction or response of the sense organs when they come in contact with external objects. This is the uppermost or superficial aspect or layer of the vijnana skanda. Manas represents the aspect of its mental functioning, thinking, reasoning, conceiving ideas, etc. Sita, which is here called alaya represents the deepest, finest, and subtlest aspect or layer of the aggregate of consciousness. It contains all the traces or impressions of the past actions and all good and bad future possibilities. Topic. Tathagata Garbha thought The store consciousness concept developed along with the Buddha nature doctrine and resolved into the concept of mindstream or the consciousness continuity Sanskrit, sata santana to avoid being denounced as running counter to the doctrine of emptiness sunyata and the tenets of selflessness anatman. It may be ultimately traceable to the luminous mind mentioned once in the Agamas, but according to Kalupahana, the concept of alaya is borrowed from Lankavatara, but it does not have the same characteristics nor does it function in the same way. It is neither the originally pure mind nor the location of the womb of enlightenment. Garbha Samsthana. 
To account for the notion of Buddha nature in all beings, Yogacara scholars in China such as Su N, C N 632-682 the first patriarch in China, advocated two types of nature, the latent nature found in all beings Li Fu Xing and the Buddha nature in practice. Xing Fu Xing. The latter nature was determined by the innate seeds listed above. The three natures The Yogacarans defined three basic modes by which we perceive our world. These are referred to in Yogacara as the three natures of perception. They are Parikalpita literally, fully conceptualized, imaginary nature, wherein things are incorrectly comprehended based on conceptual construction, through attachment and erroneous discrimination. Paratantra literally, other dependent, dependent nature by which the correct understanding of the dependently originated nature of things is understood. Paranispana literally, fully accomplished, absolute nature, through which one comprehends things as they are in themselves, uninfluenced by any conceptualization at all. Also, regarding perception, the Yogacarans emphasized that our everyday understanding of the existence of external objects is problematic, since in order to perceive any object and thus, for all practical purposes, for the object to exist. There must be a sensory organ as well as a correlative type of consciousness to allow the process of cognition to occur. <inaudible> <inaudible> emptiness in Yogacara The doctrine of sunyata is central to Yogacara, as to any Mahayana school. Early Yogacara texts, such as the Samdhanirmocana Sutra and the Yogacarabhumi Sastra, often act as explanations of the Prajnaparamita Sutras. Related concepts as dependent origination and the doctrine of two truths are also central in Yogacara thought and meditation. But the Yogacara school developed its own insights on the nature of sunyata. T. He Yogacara thinkers did not simply comment on Madhyamika thought. They attempted to ground insight into emptiness in a critical understanding of the mind, articulated in a sophisticated theoretical discourse. Yogacara has a positive approach of emptiness. Although meaning absence of inherent existence in Madhyamaka, to the Yogacarans emptiness means absence of duality between perceiving subject grahaka, zin pa, and the perceived object graya, bz hung ba. Each of the three natures has its corresponding absence of nature. Parikalpita equals greater than Lakshana Nishvabhavada, the absence of inherent characteristic. Paratantra equals greater than Upati Nishvabhavada, the absence of inherent arising. Paranaspana equals greater than Paramartha Nishvabhavada, the absence of inherent ultimacy. Each of these absences is a form of emptiness, i.e., the nature is empty of the particular qualified quality. Yogacara gave special significance to the lesser discourse on emptiness of the agamas. It is often quoted in later Yogacara texts as a true definition of emptiness. <laughs> Alakakaravada and Satyakaravada An important debate about the reality of mental appearances within Yogacara led to its later subdivision into two systems of Alakakaravada tib, R -N -A -M -R -Zun -pa, false aspectarians and Satyakaravada R -N -A -M -B -D -E -N -pa, true aspectarians or aspectarians akara and non-aspectarians anakara. The core issue is whether appearances or aspects of objects in the mind are treated as true or false While this division did not exist in the works of the early Yogacara philosophers, tendencies similar to these views can be discerned in the works of Yogacara thinkers like Dharmapala c. 530-561, and Sturamati c. 510-570, According to Yaroslav Komarovsky the distinction is, although Yogacaras in general do not accept the existence of an external material world, according to Satyakaravada its appearances or aspects reflected in consciousness have a real existence, because they are of one nature with the really existent consciousness, their creator. According to Alakakaravada, neither external phenomena nor their appearances and, in the minds that reflect them really exist. 
What exists in reality is only primordial mind described as self-cognition or individually self-cognizing primordial mind Topic: Meditation and awakening. Topic: <inaudible> Meditation. As the name of the school suggests, meditation practice is central to the Yogacara tradition. Practice manuals prescribe the practice of mindfulness of body, feelings, thoughts and dharmas in oneself and others, out of which an understanding of the non-differentiation of self and other is said to arise. This process is referred to in the Yogacara tradition as asraya paravirti, turning about in the basis, or revolution of the basis, the basis being the storehouse consciousness. A sudden revulsion, turning, or re-turning of the alaya vijñāna back into its original state of purity. The mind returns to its original condition of non-attachment, non-discrimination and non-duality. In this awakening it is realized that observer and observed are not distinct entities, but mutually co-dependent. Five categories of beings One of the more controversial teachings espoused by the Yogacara school was an extension of the teachings on seeds and store conscious. Based on the Samdhanirmocana Sutra and the Lankavatara Sutra, the Yogacara school posited that sentient beings had innate seeds that would make them capable of achieving a particular state of enlightenment and no other. Thus, beings were categorized in five ways. Beings whose innate seeds gave them the capacity to achieve full Buddhahood i.e. Bodhisattva path. Beings whose innate seeds gave them the capacity to achieve the state of a Pratyekabuddha private Buddha. Beings whose innate seeds gave them the capacity to achieve the state of an Arhat. Beings whose innate seeds had an indeterminate nature, and could potentially be any of the above. Beings whose innate seeds were incapable of achieving enlightenment ever, the fifth class of beings, the Ishantika, were described in various Mahayana sutras as being incapable of achieving enlightenment, unless in some cases through the aid of a Buddha or Bodhisattva. Nevertheless, the notion was highly criticized by adherents of the Lotus Sutra e the Tiantai school, and its teaching of universal Buddhahood. This tension appears in East Asian Buddhist history. Topic. Contemporary scholarship According to Lusthaus, Etienne Lamotte, a famous student of Louis de la Vallée Poussin, profoundly advanced Yogacara studies, and his efforts remain unrivaled among Western scholars. Topic. Philosophical dialogue, Yogacara, idealism and phenomenology Yogacara has also been identified in the Western philosophical tradition as idealism, or more specifically subjective idealism. This equation was standard until recently, when it began to be challenged by scholars such as Kachamudam, Anakar, Kalupahana, Dunn, Lusthaus, Powers, and Wayman. Buddhist scholar J. Garfield continues to uphold the equation of Yogacara and idealism, however. To the same effect, Nobayoshi Yamabe states that Dignaga also clearly inherited the idealistic system of Yogacara. Like many contemporary scholars, Yamabe is aware that the texts considered to be Yogacara treatises reflect various stages in addressing the issue of mind and matter. Yogacara has also been aligned with phenomenalism. In modern Western philosophical discourse, Edmund Husserl and Maurice Merleau Ponty have approached what Western scholarship generally concedes to be a standard Yogacara position. Legacy There are two important aspects of the Yogacara Schemata that are of special interest to modern-day practitioners. One is that virtually all schools of Mahayana Buddhism came to rely on these Yogacara explanations as they created their own doctrinal systems, including the Zen schools. For example, the early Zen tradition in China was sometimes referred to simply as the Lankavatara school. Ch. Len Jia Zong Lenchie Zong, due to their strong association with the Lankavatara Sutra. 
This sutra draws heavily upon Yogacara theories of the eight consciousnesses, especially the Alayavijnana. Accounts recording the history of this early period are preserved in records of the Lankavatara masters ch. Len -ja -shi -zg -len -shi -zg. That the scriptural tradition of Yogacara is not yet well known among the community of Western practitioners is perhaps attributable to the fact that most of the initial transmission of Buddhism to the West has been directly concerned with meditation and basic doctrines. However, within Tibetan Buddhism more and more Western students are becoming acquainted with this school. Very little research in English has been carried out on the Chinese Yogacara traditions. See also Cheng Weishi Lun Discourse on the Perfection of Consciousness Only Lambert Schmidhausen Trimsaka Vijñaptamatrata 30 verses on consciousness only Vimsataka Vijñaptamatratasiddhi 20 verses on consciousness only equals equals notes <laughs>